Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Could you guys pay attention, please? Um, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think a lot of you guys have met me, but I'm Wesley, and uh, so today I'm going to be presenting about Blue Sky and the AT protocol, uh, and then I'll be leading the hack track, uh, hack track uh, about that. So, um, yeah, I just want to give a brief overview of what Blue Sky is, what the underlying AT protocol is, uh, some of the things that I find exciting about it. Um, I'm just curious, is anyone, is anyone here familiar with Blue Sky? Okay, wow, that's great. Uh, way more than last week. Uh, so yeah, I'm, you know, I kind of think of Blue Sky as like potentially an uninitifiable social web. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, so there's this, uh, this Canadian American author uh, writes a lot about technology and uh, social media platforms. And he, he coined this term, uh, initiatification, which is basically this process that uh, a lot of consumer facing products uh, eventually go through. So I'm just going to like read this quote fr from him. It's, uh, so here's how platforms die. First, uh, they're good to their users. Then they abuse their users to make things better for their business customers. Finally, they abuse those business customers to claw back all the value for themselves. Then they die. I call this inshitification. Uh, so it's it's a pretty well-known term in the D-Web space. I know David's quite familiar with it. Uh, he was talking about how event uh, no uh, meetups was uh, getting inshitified. So um, it's it's a common experience. I'm sure a lot of us uh, have experienced. So what's what's the solution to this problem? Uh, and where does where does Blue Sky and the AT protocol fit in? Uh, and you know, basically, the way I like to think about it is that the solution to instantification is we need to give users more power to have more uh, ability to switch between platforms and to choose options that aren't as shitty as uh, as the current options. Um, so yeah, giving users more power, having things like right to exit. Uh, interoperability, like having data portability, um, and uh, finally protocols, not platforms. So we're, we're going to get into into the protocol there, and uh, just like a recent example of in, in, of like the consequences of intuitification is the the transition from Twitter to X. Uh, you know, a lot of people may have built up their sort of businesses on on Twitter, and uh, like their income or their livelihood depended on their audience and the relationship with their audience. And then all of a sudden uh, the platform completely changes and a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, people no longer could use it for, for that uh, livelihood. Um, so, you know, what, what can we do about that? And uh, Blue Sky hopefully, and the underlying AT proto protocol is, uh, an, is a way for people to not uh, get locked into one company and the decisions they make in terms of how they uh, engage with the social web. Uh, so yeah, what, what is Blue Sky? Uh, like most of you put your hands up, so I'm just gonna run through this quickly. It's like it's a Twitter-like platform. So microblogging uh, app, there's a, there's a mobile app, uh, there's a web app, so you guys can download it right now and, and create an account if you haven't already. Um, notably, what's uh, already quite different about it than Twitter is the amount of configuration that uh, exists in there. So uh, instead of having two feeds that you can choose from, which is the, you know, the following feed, which is people you follow in reverse chronological order, and then the, the black box Twitter algorithm, which did get open sourced, uh, which is basically just a uh, rage optimizing machine uh, to optimize engagement, uh, there's actually a marketplace of feeds. So anything anyone can think of, uh, in terms of how they want to filter the fire hose of all the posts that are taking place on Blue Sky, someone can make a feed, which is actually what uh, what I want to do during the hack day. Um, and so, for example, uh, uh, there's like a moss feed that you know it only shows pictures of moss. Um, there you go. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna go to Blue Sky quickly uh, to show you guys what it looks like. So yeah, this, I mean, it's quite similar to Twitter. Uh, you have your feed, you can uh, comment, on, comment on things. Uh, but what's interesting is you have like super flexible moderation and then there's, they're actually, they just recently announced uh, their moderation tooling. So they have their default moderation, but then there's actually tools for communities to moderate. 
Um, we're not going to get all into this in in the presentation, but uh, basically, um, you can create these really customizable news feeds and online experiences depending on what different groups or different individuals prefer. Uh, yeah, and so just some stats, like there, there's actually quite, a, in terms of like decentralized, federated social networking goes, this this actually quite a bit of users. So there's, there's a big opportunity here for, for hackers and developers to uh, create interesting experiences and then there's a platform with you know millions of users that you can uh, potentially reach um, so yeah blue sky is built on a federated architecture so there's some main components uh, that that the application is built on um, and I'm just going to get into these at a really high level but basically uh, you have something called your personal data server so I don't know who's familiar with um, with Mastodon Okay, basically everyone. So Mastodon, you have servers uh, which host like a, a community or a network of people, um, and then that sort of controls your your account, uh, and then what what you see in your feed. Blue Sky actually federates at the level of the user, so you yourself have your own uh, data repository of all your posts, all your interactions, um, all the other types of uh, data that you know other people will uh, invent and describe in the future. Right now, it's just like the microblogging experience. And it doesn't matter uh, who, like where that repository is hosted. Um, basically, it just needs to be crawlable by what are called relays, which crawl like all like the, the global view of all the personal data, uh, personal data servers, and then um, pulls them into an event stream called the Firehose. And then that's sort of what your app view. Uh, what, so when you log into Blue Sky, it's an app view. It, it, it uh, subscribes to this this huge fire hose of events of people posting and commenting and resharing and whatnot, uh, and then you have feed generators which um, will use things like labelers. So label labelers will go in and say, "Is this uh, NS uh, uh, NSFW, for example, content, or is this hateful content, or whatnot?" And then you can go in and uh, you can actually see in the bottom here. You, you have actually a bit of options. You can just say like. Don't show me any of this, uh, like whatever the labelers pick up, uh, or you can warn it, or you can hide it. Um, and this is just the beginning, but there's uh, what they've done is they've broken out the components or the services that are required to run sort of a big, you know, uh, global scale uh, public conversation platform. Um, so in theory, you could swap in and out any of these things, which uh, you know, they think is really important for, for federated to actually matter. There's an interesting quote in the documentation about that, where it's like, for federation to actually matter, it needs to be easy for people to change the underlying parts, of the, the, the underlying parts uh, and use different providers, for example. Uh, okay, so, um, so that's an onion. Uh, so yeah, there's a bit of an onion here, like in terms of there's so many layers to Blue Sky and the, the AT protocol. So Blue Sky is the, the app that you use, but it's built on top of uh, the AT protocol, um, which in theory is what's going to make uh, Blue Sky different and uh, unintuitive uh, compared to other social platforms. Uh, so the AT protocol stands for Authenticated Transfer Protocol. Um, and uh, the, this is where the, the nitty gritty really comes into play. And so these, these different components here are actually built on more primitive concepts that, uh, that the AT protocol itself defines. Uh, the AT protocol doesn't actually really say like, how do you create this uh, fire hose of event streams? It really just says, how do you identify users? How do you uh, represent their data? Uh, how do you define new types of data and interactions? Um, and so they call these uh, distributed identifiers or DIDs. Some, I'm sure some of you are familiar with that. Um, it's kind of like uh, your phone number, I guess, in a sense, uh, rather than a username and password. Uh, like it just identifies you in a network. It doesn't matter who your provider is. You know, you have your phone number. You could switch from Telus to Fido, which I did recently uh, to save some money. Um, but I kept the same phone number. And when I text people, it doesn't, you know, to them, the experience is indifferent. So just like in, in Blue Sky, if someone decides to change 
who's hosting their personal data server, I don't notice any difference in, in my feed. Uh, in the, yeah. Uh, so this, this is just what they call uh, the repository is like your collection of all of your personal data, which is really easy to port. Um, and it uses, it's, uh, if I recall correctly, it's like a, a Merkle tree structure um, and it, they call it um, self-authenticating. So you don't need, you just need the data structure, the data and the structure itself to be able to verify who, who uh, created this data, um, which makes it really easy to like port it around. Um, yeah, lexicons is, is pretty much just the, the schema system or the way for servers to understand how do you read and interpret uh, data from the, from the repository. Um, yeah, and then, so basically some of the ideas I had, uh, uh, so what I was mentioning, you have, you have feeds that you can, you, custom feeds you can create. There's like 40 plus thousand feeds on Blue Sky. Um, I have two ideas and that I, I think I'm leaning towards the first one, which is really low hanging fruit, which is, uh, to create an event feed, um, which will basically filter the firehose of posts, check to see if there's links to, uh, known event platforms and then uh, we'll try and upload that to blue sky so people can use blue sky as a way to to check out events um, another more ambitious idea which i probably won't really get started on today is a bridge feed uh, which would require a bit more sophisticated labeling uh, which the whole idea of bridge feed is the opposite opposite of uh, engagement optimizing uh, metrics that most platforms use and it's uh, the whole idea is to try and surface content that is getting agreement or unlikely consensus from people that tend to uh, dis disagree in, in terms of their their ideology and, and politics um so it's like how can we how can we oh, so like a consensus almost uh or bridging points of view is yes that it's like how, the idea is like the content that gets promoted is the content that's trying to bridge differing okay. viewpoints uh, so rather than like clickbait rage, like, oh my gosh, look at how crazy this person is that is on the other side of the political aisle. It's actually more like, hey, look, there's common ground here between uh, different people. Um, do, you, do you think that that can bias it? I, I, I'm very interested yeah. like, in, does it end up in like a more moderate uh, position surfacing often? Or does it still end up in like both like sides of, let's say? Uh, I'm I'm not sure, but there are actually a number of tools that use this. It's called bridging-based ranking in practice. Uh, so there's actually in Taiwan, the, the 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 federal government uses something called Polis, which is a way to basically pull uh, the citizenry of like their opinions or thoughts on different things, and they can use this to get really nuanced um, uh, sentiments of the population on how to introduce new policies. So rather than things blowing up and then people like, you know, showing short clips of RMPs in parliament, like saying ridiculous things, it's actually like, how can we find these really granular points that actually have broad agreement so that we can focus our energy and attention on those and, you know, uh, make our, our democratic institutions and processes more, uh, more effective pretty much. But, um, we can get into that later. This is really interesting. I'll, I'll drop a link to it in the in the Discord. Are you and sure? maybe uh, P O L I S. Yeah. Uh, what we should maybe even do is run a D web polis, <laughs> just as an example. Yeah, that'd be super cool. And say like we should and see who. Yeah, I would. I would love to play around with these things yeah. more. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm a big fan of direct democracy. So that's yeah. Yeah, it's super. It's really interesting. Yeah. To bring up another example, um, Twitter community notes. I think. Yeah. One. Yeah. So, the, the broad, broad idea of Twitter community groups is based on their followers. They classify <laughs> people into different groups based on their followers. Right. And a, a Twitter community note is a note below a tweet to give it more clarification, like if it's misleading or whatever. Right. So you can only add a note if people from different groups agree on the note. Right. So it's a, yeah. I, mean, so, that, I, I thought that was a cool thing that Twitter has done. Totally, yeah, I think a lot of the, the research, uh, and, like theoretical research of bridging-based ranking, which inspired platforms like Polis, directly influenced the development of community notes, which I think started as uh, Birdwatch. Um, 
but yeah, as you were mentioning, there's sort of, you need to construct this social graph and understand, like infer people's like uh, political ideologies, which I think is- Or at least just group them together. Right? Right. Oh, these guys follow each other, talk to each other. Right. These guys do not. So some kind, of clustering, on yeah, some kind of clustering, yeah, some kind of some clustering based on yeah. uh, political. Uh, and we see the Twitter open source. I don't know. There's some real like idiotic like manual like labels for everything. Okay. Like, so yeah. like, no, do I you mean, follow that? No, I'm trying. Yeah, there's like a massive, <laughs> massive <laughs> That's yeah. interesting. And there's literally like labels for like oh like I'm a bad Republican. There's labels for like yeah. some of the most idiotic shit. Wow. Hard hard coded yeah. groups. COVID, like, like I've mentioned, a bunch of stuff. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's really hard for it. Yeah. You should check it out. It's, it's probably fun. just some, like, hacky response to, to COVID. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> 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 the, the your <laughs> situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then, I mean, anything else people are interested in, there's there's templates for building bots. Um, they just released the, this their moderation tooling, so uh, you can play around with that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for, for Blue Sky and the ET protocol. Yeah, if anyone's got any more questions, otherwise we can, we can move on to whoever's next.